There is this dark matter, which seems to be out there, which dominates the material of the universe. It's by far the majority of the material substance in the universe. It's called dark matter. Nobody really knows what it is. Um, it seems to, it's the major part of the mass of a galaxy, and it's first observed because of the stars going around. They go around too fast in order to compensate for the extra attraction of this dark matter. And that's how it was first observed. And all sorts of observations, cosmological, tell you it's there. Now, if it's there, and if it's really gravity, because it's picked up on the gravitational degrees of freedom, there's nothing else in physics going on with regard to it. It tells you something about what it ought to be. Now, one thing it ought to be, and I think I've listed these things here, if you can read them. One thing it ought to be, what's its mass? Well, the only thing it can be, if you've just got gravity, roughly speaking, is a thing called the Planck mass. Well, it might be 8 pi times it or something or other. But it's something of the order of the Planck mass. How big is the Planck mass? It's about 10 to the minus 5 grams. That's about the mass of the eye of a flea, I believe I got from Google or something. Now, that is uh, huge if you're talking about particle physics. Astronomers have come across a fresh evidence which challenges the standard model of cosmology. A new theory has emerged that could potentially replace dark matter and resolve a significant astronomical puzzle. This new theory, known as AQUAL, suggests the potential non-existence of dark matter. Researchers adjusted Newtonian gravity to align with galaxy rotation curve observations, addressing a possible 90-year-old error and opening avenues for a more profound comprehension of gravity itself. What happened 90 years ago that altered the path of cosmology? Why are physicists creating an alternative gravity theory? Most importantly, how might this new concept enhance our understanding of the universe? Let's explore these questions and delve into why Sir Roger Penrose suggests that dark matter doesn't exist. Dark matter holds a crucial role in the standard model of cosmology, representing a hypothetical form of matter that is thought to constitute 27% of the observable universe. The challenge lies in its elusive nature, as dark matter doesn't interact with electromagnetic radiation, making direct detection a formidable task. Instead, scientists infer its existence through gravitational effects on visible matter, radiation, and the universe's large-scale structure. Surprisingly, the standard model of particle physics lacks an elementary particle to represent dark matter. While scientists are confident in its existence, understanding its properties and behavior remains an ongoing pursuit, with the ultimate aim of formulating the definitive theory. To grasp AUQEAL, it's essential to delve into the origin of dark matter's role. In 1933, Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky observed a cosmic puzzle. Examining galaxy clusters, he realized that the observed mass of matter couldn't account for the total mass of the galaxy cluster, inferred from the motion of galaxies bound by gravitational forces. This revelation occurred within the coma cluster. Zwicky initially calculated the coma cluster's mass by studying its edge galaxies, then compared it with the mass derived from the brightness and number of galaxies in the cluster. The two values didn't align, leading him to propose the existence of an unseen matter type, later termed dark matter. Backing up this study is the analysis by American astronomer Vera Rubin of galaxy rotation curves. A galaxy rotation curve illustrates the orbital speeds of visible stars or gas in the galaxy relative to their radial distance from the center. In our solar system, the rotation curve shows a pattern where the average rotational velocity of planets decreases as their average distance from the Sun increases. Essentially, planets farther from the Sun move at a slower pace, following an inverse relationship with the square root of their radial distance. However, Rubin and her colleague Kent Ford discovered a deviation from this pattern in galaxies. Contrary to the solar system model, almost all stars in galaxies orbit the center at increasing speeds as the distance from the center increases. They observed that the outer regions of these galaxies rotated at similar or increased speeds compared to the inner regions. This unexpected behavior suggested the presence of a substantial amount of unseen matter in the galaxies, termed dark matter, similar to Zwicky's earlier observations. Over time, 
Additional evidence supporting the existence of dark matter accumulated. In the 1980s, the observation of gravitational lensing by galaxy clusters provided further support. Then, in the 1990s, measurements of the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale structure formation of the universe indicated the likely existence of dark matter. These observations indicated that the universe displays more clumps and filaments than expected if composed only of visible matter. While the idea of dark matter is well established in modern cosmology, a significant challenge persists. Scientists remain uncertain about the composition of dark matter. In the standard model, there is no elementary particle identified as dark matter. The search for such particles is ongoing, with proposed candidates like weakly interacting massive particles, massive compact halo objects, actions, and sterile neutrinos. Scientists are actively exploring these possibilities at the Large Hadron Collider and through experiments like CRESST, LUX, ZEPLIN, the Axion Dark Matter Experiment, the Tsenin Dark Matter Experiment, and dark matter maps from the Dark Energy Survey. Despite these efforts, all these experiments have yielded no results so far. This prompts the question, what if there is no dark matter? What if this is a flaw in our understanding of gravity itself? Numerous research teams are exploring alternatives to dark matter, and one such alternative is modified Newtonian dynamics, also called MOND. MOND entails tweaking Newtonian gravity to apply to galaxy rotation curves. Given that Newton's laws are extensively tested and valid for high acceleration systems like the solar system, MOND, introduced by Mordechai Milgram, in 1983, proposes a modified gravitational force law for extremely low acceleration environments. This theory posits a threshold acceleration below which there is a transition from Newtonian dynamics to NOND regimes. Built upon this concept, Milgram and Jacob Bekenstein crafted a generalized theory in 1984 known as AQUAL, shorthand for A quadratic Lagrangian. This theory tweaked Newtonian gravity by altering the classical Lagrangian to one involving a general function and the threshold acceleration term. The prevailing cosmological model is the lambda cold dark matter model, or the LCDM model. Let's grasp how it diverges from the AQUAL hypothesis. Each galaxy's rotation curve has two significant segments, the inner one, an ascending curve, and the outer one, either slightly increasing or nearly saturated. These segments correspond to the movement of stars in the inner and outer regions of galaxies. As the LCDM model attributes the rotation curves to dark matter, the distribution of matter should explain both the inner and outer portions of the curve. Conversely, AQUAL contends that the transition caused by galaxy dynamics clarifies the difference between the inner and outer portions of the rotation curve. The slight kink in the curve arises from the velocity distribution shift between inner and outer stellar motions. This outlines the distinction between the LCDM and AQUAL models. Now let's delve into the recent study by K. Sha. It mainly focused on how gravity modifications and dark matter can account for the inner and outer segments of rotation curves. Chad examined 152 galaxies documented in the Spitzer Photometry and Accurate Rotation Curves, also called SPARC database. The objective was to explore the theoretical options for distinguishing dark matter from modified gravity. To achieve this, Chad analyzed the statistical relationship between the observed centripetal acceleration of moving particles and the anticipated Newtonian acceleration derived from the distribution of baryonic matter in the galaxies, where baryonic matter corresponds to stars and dust. The dark matter models exhibited a greater variability compared to the SPRC data. Among the 152 galaxies discussed in this paper, the SPRC data favored AQUAL over the LCDM model. Che observed that only when applying the cosmic mean external field did AQUAL modified gravity accurately predict both inner and outer parts of the rotation curves. 
This study provides an in-depth analysis of AQUAL and its potential to offer fresh perspectives on gravity's nature. While the results are intriguing, AQUAL has its limitations as it falls short in thoroughly explaining observed gravitational lensing by galaxies. Nevertheless, this study marks a stride toward comprehending the theory's advantages. It suggests that by adjusting Newtonian gravity slightly, we might unravel one of the significant puzzles in cosmology and astrophysics. Now let's discuss why Sir Roger Penrose says that dark matter doesn't exist. Roger Penrose questions the existence of dark matter, suggesting it's more speculative than firmly established. His skepticism arises from a revaluation of the gravitational principles governing galaxies. Instead of turning to dark matter to explain observed phenomena, Penrose proposes a potential need to adjust our understanding of gravity. Penrose's stance is in line with his alternative theory, conformal cyclic cosmology, which posits that the universe undergoes cycles of expansion and contraction, wiping away any traces of the previous cycle. In this framework, the gravitational effects linked to dark matter might result from necessary modifications to our understanding of gravity. He suggests that our current grasp of gravity, described by Einstein's general relativity, might not fully capture the complex dynamics at cosmic scales. Penrose leans towards adjusting the laws of gravity rather than introducing an unseen form of matter. To him, dark matter acts as a placeholder, indicating our lack of comprehension of gravity's deeper workings. While Penrose recognizes the gravitational anomalies dark matter proponents highlight, he advocates for a deeper exploration of gravity's nature. For him, dark matter serves as a conceptual shortcut, delaying a thorough investigation into cosmic mysteries. Penrose's perspective challenges the mainstream narrative, urging the scientific community to reassess foundational understandings rather than relying on hypothetical entities like dark matter. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to share your thoughts. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any future videos.